Good afternoon. I'm Jaime Alvaro Jr. and I'll be, uh, and I'll be your I'll be the uh, second uh, negative uh, defending um, presenting you with the uh, workability claim as well as uh, our disadvantages to uh, to uh, the advocates' uh, proposition. Now uh, they're arguing that we should be lowering the drinking age to uh, uh, to 18, um, but uh, in, in hopes to uh, to promote uh, a responsible drinking. Uh, now this is uh, this can't necessarily be possible, especially when you're saying that uh, how uh, drinking is um, um, being done, it's being uh, being used in uh, in uh, recreational um, uh, events. Uh, the only reason uh, you have binge drinking at 21 is because um, you have you have um, the youth waiting until they turn 21 to go to Vegas, to go to uh, uh, to go to downtown Fullerton, to go to various bars and just experience that legally. Now, um, by lowering the drinking age to uh, 18, it's not necessarily going to make them uh, more responsible drinkers uh, in moderation. And as a matter of fact, it could uh, possibilities um, could be that it could lead them to doing that instead of the age of 21. They're doing an 18-year-old uh, party where you're doing yes, let's celebrate 18 uh, our 18th birthday by binge drinking or or so and so. And it also does the whole um, uh, the forbidden fruit uh, theory, where even though even though um, it's it's illegal at the age of 18 right now, it could lower that down by lowering by lowering, by lowering the um, uh, the legal limit uh, to 18. So instead of starting to drink at a uh, 16, 17, or 18, they're gonna start drinking at 14, 13, 12. Um, um, now we can see that uh, by lowering the drinking ages to uh, that we can see that lowering the drinking ages um, to 16, 17, or 18 uh, in some European uh, uh, countries is rather inappropriate to uh, um, to be adapted all this here in America, as um, as here at at, at this age uh, you're you're bringing um, alcohol and you're introducing alcohol to. Uh, uh, to the youth when they barely just received their uh, driver's license. Uh, so not only do you have, uh, um, you know, and as well as an immature audience um, who uh, doesn't know completely um, what you know what responsibilities to take. Uh, you gotta take a uh, You gotta take uh, You gotta take an effect um, in consideration of uh, you know how much youth drinks right now that is under age. Uh, and a survey done by a uh, 2011, uh, in 2011 um, titled a Youth Misbehavior Survey found that in the last 30 days in that high school, 39% uh, uh, of the students had drank some amount of alcohol, 22% uh, uh, have binge drink, 8% uh, have uh, uh, either drove after drinking alcohol, and 24 had rode with a driver who had been drinking alcohol. Uh, that, just, that just goes to show that, um, that right now that it's at 21, uh, that, that we're limiting the factors. I mean, still the risks are great, um, but by lowering it down to 18, we're lowering we're the, we're lowering that forbidden fruit to a younger age. Um, now, some major disadvantages to uh, to lowering to lowering uh, the drinking age to uh, 18 is uh, is uh, the amount of uh, well. First, you got to look at uh, what was the uh, as stated before. What was the main purpose of, of establishing uh, um, the minimum age at uh, 21, and um, and that was mainly to uh, to prevent uh, fatal uh, car, car accidents involved with uh, uh, DUI, driving under the influence. Um, we can see that at an annual average, we have 4.2 million people between the ages of 16 and 20 that have been reported uh, driving under the influence. Um, or under some illegal um, drug, uh, drug during uh, the past year. And with about 169,000 of these uh, uh, persons, about 4% 4, 4 had reported that they had been arrested and uh, booked for DUI. So that's only what goes reported. Uh, that, that doesn't include uh, what's being, what uh, the percentage that makes it home under the influence, uh, serving from lane to lane. Uh, the, the potential uh, risks are there. Uh, we got to see as well not only just the the fatalities that could lead to that that could be resulted to that, but as well as the costs that, that come to uh, uh, the the state with uh, with data here uh, conclusively showing that um, I'm sorry, wrong one. Um, oh yes, uh, with the cost of uh, youth drinking uh, estimated at 27 billion uh, annually. And that's including uh, the cost of uh, both uh, society and individuals, uh, such as uh, medical care, 
criminal justice system costs, motor vehicle crashes, and uh, lost productivity. Um, and that'll be the end of my segment. Okay, the negative's up next, and you guys have a minute and 30 seconds of prep time left.